So in Excel there's a neat feature called conditional formatting and what it does is it allows you to highlight data here. What I've got is a whole series of temperatures and I've picked these off the web so I don't know just how accurate they are and they're in degrees Celsius. So what I'm going to do is just show you that if I change sheets you can highlight by colour. So each one of these colours, there are three colours here, represent three different bands being high, sort of medium and low. And I can do the same with icons, so you can see here again each one has a different colour representing whether they're high, medium or low and we'll be taking a little bit more of a look at that in a moment. And I also have bars here as well, so the longer the bar the higher the temperature is and you can see here something like minus three has actually got it showing as a negative. So how do you do this? Well really there's a couple of different ways that you can. One of them is to use the sort of built-in tools and the other one is something where we can go into a bit more detail and I do that in a separate video tutorial. So what I'm going to do is just go back to my temps one here and just show you how easy it is to apply either colors, icons or bars. And what you have to do just highlight this block here and what you do is go straight into conditional formatting here and you'll see that you can quite simply apply bars. If I move the mouse over it I get all these different kind of fills. They're gradient fills, they're solid fills and you can see I can choose one and it changes. Now if I go back into here you'll see that the colour scales work in a similar way and what it's going to do is it's going to put the colour and the bars on it so it's going to overlay it. So what I'm going to do first is just clear that. So I'm going to go to clear rules and I'm going to clear rules from the selected cells and it disappears. I'm going to go back, choose the colour scales and I could just choose that one. And again I need to clear it otherwise if I go into conditional formatting again and choose my icon sets and you can see these are quite interesting with sort of high low arrows, you've got sort of like uh, ticks and crosses and exclamation marks signal strength which is an interesting one, ratings and so on. And again you'll see it's overwriting it over the top so it keeps both of them and I could actually do that which gives it an interesting effect. So it's really quite simple. So like if you've got say 0 to 30 anything from 0 to 10 is going to be one band of colours then you've got the middle band which is going to be like say 11 to 20 and then you've got say 21 to 30. So you can see that it's just splitting them up and it's doing the calculation for you. So something else you could do, and I'm just going to highlight this, and again I'm just going to clear my rules. So the other option that you have is to actually specify a value. So if I go into conditional formatting here, I can actually tell it that if I go into highlight cell rules, that anything greater than say 30, 30 degrees Celsius or centigrade, whatever you want to call it, is going to be highlighted with a particular format. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see it comes up here that format cells that are greater than, and I'm going to change that to 30, are going to fill red with dark red text. And you can see it's sort of highlighting it up at the top there as I move over, sort of giving me an indication of what it's going to look like. So I could choose to have any of these. It could be red text. Click OK and you'll now see that these are in red. Now I could do this and be very specific about what I want by going back into conditional formatting. I'm just going to clear those rules again and this time I'm going to go into my highlight cells rules, choose greater than, again I'm going to say greater than 30, but this time I'm going to go into custom format. Now when I do that this dialog box pops up I can't actually change the font, but I can change the font style, I can make it bold. I can't change the size here, but I can change the colour, so I can make that say this red here. I could make it bold and italic. I could put a border around those ones. I can also put a fill colour on it, so if I wanted to I could put in say yellow. This is going to look quite bad actually probably but I'm going to choose it anyway. You can also use the number formatting to show it in a particular currency or so on as well. If I click on OK and then OK again 
you'll see it now highlights them. And just to show you something, if I change that to 29, it immediately drops the formatting. If I put it in as 33, it changes it back. So that's putting in greater than a particular value. I can also add more by going into conditional formatting, is make it so that any value less than 10, so this is an addition to anything greater than 30. I'm going to choose less than, I'm going to change that to 10, is going to be highlighted differently as well. I'm going to go back into my custom formats. Formats here, I'm going to make it bold. Actually, I'm going to choose bold and italic this time. And I'm going to make it that the font color is blue. Click on OK and OK again. And now you can see anything less than 10. So if I make that 10, so it doesn't include the 10, it's anything less than that. So there are a number of options in here. And again, I just need to highlight it including between, so it will find anything between two values, and that includes the values as well. Anything that's equal to a specific value, which could also be text. And then you've also got text that contains, so that is text that might have something in there. So if you've got Microsoft Excel and you ask it to highlight Excel, it will find Microsoft Excel and Excel. You can find it for dates. You can also get it to highlight duplicate values. There are more rules, and that is in part two of this tutorial. So another thing that you can do are top and bottom rules. So you can get it to highlight the top 10 items, or you can get it to highlight the top 10% of those items. So with this one, if you had 200 values, it would show you the top 10 of those. Top 10% would show you the top 20, because it's 10% of the 200. Same again for the bottom, for the 10%, as well for the bottom 10% and also above average and below average. But let me just show you, when I go into top 10 items, it doesn't have to specifically be 10. When they say top 10, you can choose top five, top whatever you like. So I can change that to top 20, and you can see it's immediately highlighting some of them here. And the same for the percentage as well. So anything that is below a certain percentage, it doesn't have to be 10% or above a certain percentage, you can choose what that percentage is. So that's how you can do some conditional formatting using Excel.